Today's expose, we're going to talk about the word goofy. Black people and the word goofy. One of the things I have noticed between the ultra cool black folks is the word goofy. For anything that is not black, that is not cool, that is not copacetic. And it's very interesting because I remember I was dating this chick from New York and I did something and she said my behavior was goofy. Let me just say that. I was like, what do you mean goofy? That's just what I do. And this is one of the ultra cool aspects of the black marketing department. The black marketing department is <clears throat> to essentially avoid doing anything that is not black and not cool, therefore goofy. I remember I was listening to some young black people talking about white people going camping and camping was goofy. See, Goofy is a character based upon the Disney uh, show, but for black folks, the word Goofy has some deep negative connotations. And it's very interesting because typically I hear New Yorkers use the word Goofy to describe uncool, unblack, unacceptable behavior or something that they look down upon. Now, one of the things that's really funny with the word Goofy is like this chick I was dating, she was from Brooklyn and she was like, well, that's really some goofy behavior. And she was very stylish. She was really cute. She had blue eyes, real blue eyes. And she had that Brooklyn attitude, that Brooklyn. And I was just like, really? You gonna talk to me like that? Cause that sounds very offensive. She's like, well, you know, that's just the way I was raised. That's just how, you know, we see that type of behavior, you know, cause we went from the BK and she went into this whole thing. Cause you ever notice, like whenever you watch a video about New York with some New Yorkers, the hype factor is on 100 is, it is literally crazy. And one of the things that get, kind of gets me about this is this 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 coolness factor black folks who identify who are representatives of the black people marketing department have to have a cool vibe on each and everything they do byron allen was considered corny that's another word goofy and corny By, byron allen was considered an educated lame and this is why byron allen is a billionaire married to a white woman because the culture did not accept him. He was accepted by white people. He was enriched by white people. He was put on by white people. So why would he go ahead and go down and scoop up a ghetto-fied black woman when that isn't what, you know, what's the expression? Go where you're celebrated? He was celebrated over there. And this is one of the big issues because, you know, bringing up Jill Scott again, there are many black women who get butt hurt when they see a fine, successful, educated, well-off brother with a white woman. But during before this brother got the money, this black woman would have not wanted him. And thank you for the folks who are chiming in the comments and telling the truth because the black people market department keeps acting like this thing doesn't happen, where if you are like, a sophisticated, a well-versed, different kind of black man, that puts you at odds with the black marketing department community. It just does. This is where the words goofy, corny, educated, lame, all this stuff comes out. And this is from your own people. This isn't from white people. This isn't from Japanese people. This isn't from Jews. This is from black people towards black people and i'm like sick and tired of you folks in the comment sections keep acting like this don't happen well that ain't really happened Glenn. you're being too hard on no i'm not i'm 53 years old and i've been going through this crap my whole damn life from black folks not white folks not asian folks not jews not europeans not australians but from black people and this is one of the most harmful things because the black people marketing department will also assign you because Dave Chappelle did a skit that was so on point 
the race lottery, the race draft. Like we're going to take Tiger Woods. We're going to get Tiger Woods because essentially the black people marketing department will kick you out of the group for goofy behavior. If you act goofy, if you do not represent, if you don't hold it down, uh, you hey, we, we gonna give up. We gonna give up Tiger. Tiger, he ain't black. We gonna give him up. We gonna give up Lyndon. You know, he, he's talking about all this stuff about success. We gonna give him up. That essentially, and this once again, because we hear all of this stuff about white supremacy. Well, what about black supremacy in the black pegging order? the hierarchy within the black community. No one wants to talk about that because it's cancerous, it's harder. And like, essentially, if you grow up to be a smart little kid and you like to read books on Saturday and you, you don't really like to do sports, you could literally be kicked out of the black community because you like reading books. Seriously. Oh, he's an educated lame. We don't need him. He goofy. We don't need him. This is coming from black folks. This is not, how come we don't talk about the hostility and the dissension within the black ranks? Because all of you folks who put these comments on the last two videos, none of y'all have even mentioned that. And like for the folks who are like, I'm gonna marry a black woman, I challenge you because if you're not married now, my question to you is what are you waiting on? You know, all this, I'm gonna marry a black woman. It sound like game. Yeah, man, yeah, baby. I'm gonna marry you. I'm gonna marry you. You the one. You the one, baby. You the <laughs> hit them skins and be out. And the chick be waiting on you to get married for the next 10 years. Uh, like I said, you know, don't talk about what you gonna do. Talk about what you have already done. I don't want to hear it. It's like I'm gonna marry a black woman. Big whoop. And you know, here's here's something else. The black women don't want to hear that either. If you're gonna marry a black woman, go ahead and find one and do it. Don't keep talking about it because talk is cheap. It is cheap. Because that's what I was telling someone who was like, oh, I'm only 23 and I'm just dating this. I don't wanna hear that, I'm only 23. Because one of the things I know, and you should listen to me, if you are a young black man, the things that you hold dear, the things that you think are important, the things that you think are critical at the age of 23 are radically gonna change between the age of 23 and 33. Once again, you can debate with me on that. Like I know myself, like I used to really like um, certain kind of dressing, dressing up. You know, I came of age during the Teddy Riley guy, you know, where you had on the nice dress pants, the nice sweater, the nice, shoes and that really doesn't appeal to me anymore I, I think i lost that like 20 years ago so i'm here to tell you as you age and become a man you're going to matriculate and things are going to get a little different for you and many of the values many of the things that you champion i have a friend who was like died in the wool i'm i'm gonna marry a black woman he was 45 years old. He had married a black woman, got divorced, went through a bitter, bitter divorce. I mean, you know, she was trying to take his dreams. I mean, it was very acrimonious. And then one day he was out and uh, he met this white chick and he's like, man, I met this white chick and she's really nice. And you know, before we know it, she was his girlfriend. Before you know it, she was the second wife. And this dude was a dyed in the wool, my, uh, let's see, uh, Louis Farrakhan acolyte. And he ended up marrying a white woman after a bitter, bitter divorce from a black woman. And I was like, and he was like, I don't wanna hear it. I'm like, no, you told me you was only thing, the only sugar for you was brown sugar. You didn't want that white sugar. The only sugar for you was brown sugar. I clowned him. I still clown him. He been married to this chick like, um, 40, about eight years now, eight going on 10 years. And I'm like, how's that white sugar? How's that powdered sugar, bruh? And he like, he found someone, she's actually a good woman. She's very nice. She treats him well. And you know, once again, he was like, I'm, I'm trying to tell some of y'all, there's some of you like brown sugar for life, brown sugar for life. And you gonna get some of that white powdered sugar and it's gonna be, ooh, 
Oh! Oh! That's really good! <laughs> Give me some more of that white powdered sugar. If all you folks who's like, I, 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 I want you to date out. No, I want you to be an exceptional man. I want you to exercise all of your options. Cause see, if you say, and once again, this isn't a, this, this is a, a valid fact. If you say, I'm only going to date a black woman, you've automatically limited your options. Black women only make up 7% of the United States population. There are many tunes like, you know, you can go to Africa and get you a chick. You can go to the Dominican Republic and get you a chick. You can go to Colombia and get you a chick. So I'm not saying, cause like to be factual, I have had sexual relations, relations with Indian chicks, plural Indian chicks, Asian chicks, plural black chicks, white chicks, Jewish chicks, and a few um, chicks from the Ukraine. Three chicks from the Ukraine. And I'm gonna tell you, it was great. It was fun. So I'm not, for all you folks who wanna be like, I'm gonna limit myself to black women. I'm not gonna exercise all my options. That's your choice. Fine, cool, go ahead. But I'll be like my friend, because one day he finally admitted because we was talking and he was drinking a little bit and he was like, why didn't you tell me these white chicks were fire? I was like, dude, I've been telling you that for years. And you've been like, no, 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 no. Give me the brown sugar, give me the brown sugar. He's like, man, whoo, even the sex is better. I was sitting there like, apparently it's, you know, cause he was, he like a drunk. He was saying some stuff. Apparently his wife was very, very freaky. Very, 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 very freaky. And you know, this is one of the things that, you know, like I said, I'm here to educate you to expand and try all of your options. You should date white women, you should date Asian women, you should date, oh yeah, uh, several Hispanic women also had relations with several Hispanic women. You should be an equal opportunity dude and you should date across the board because you're gonna find a rhythm and flavor. And you're like, oh, I like this, I like this. But once again, for those of you, brown sugar for life. Until you run into a situation like Chris Rock did where Malik divorced his ass and took half his money. You know, Chris he ain't making those jokes anymore. He ain't making those jokes anymore. It ain't that so funny. Because essentially, you know, to keep it a buck, any woman can mistreat you. I don't care if she's black, white, green, purple, whatever. And also for those of you who are, and this is for you, talking about mommy issues. I've seen some of your comments that indicate that you got daddy issues. You wanna talk about that? Because see, here's one of the things that, you know, cause I have the audacity to talk about these topics and say things that a lot of people would not touch because they're afraid of, black people marketing department gonna say something. You know, at the end of the day, you know what the worst thing that's gonna happen to you by the black mark people marketing department? They gonna kick you out the group or say bad things about you and point and laugh. They ain't gonna take no money because they don't have no money to give you. They, that, that, that's it. So all of that stuff is like, cause I have the audacity to point out a fact that Statistically, most black men who are married are married to black women. And this is going on right now. We still have these problems. So marrying more black women is not going to improve the situation. Having a economic agenda, having men who are meeting women and saying, look, baby, this is the agenda. This is what we're doing. That's going to change the situation. Not just marrying black women. I married me a black woman. Yeah. We got a black family, we got some black babies. But we power! How's that gonna fix anything? Seriously, put that in the comments for you damn sensitive ass black folks who are like, well, oh God, oh, he's talking about, how dare he even say that? How dare he even mention that? How, how dare he? <sighs> to the black people marketing department, this is a message. There is a new group of black people, the progressive black people, and we aim to take this bitch over. So you've been put on notice because we ain't going nowhere. 
those of us who are the educated lames, those of us you term as goofy or corny, AKA Byron Billion Dollar Allen, AKA Byron Billionaire Allen, while you still up in the hood, running from the rats up in your rat infested apartment. But you keeping it black. We gonna keep it progressive. You've been put on notice. So for those of you who are still here, go below get 30 days to 2,500 and the Hustlers Mindset. And also go ahead and download the Oxygen app. And just to be clear, the Oxygen app does not uh, provide credit. That was a mistake that I made. And, but it's a pretty slick app and this is where you should take your 30 day to $2,500 money and channel that money into the Oxygen apps and do not let that money become part of your lifestyle budget. Okay, so that's all I got for you guys. Check out this next video.